بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم ما بعد continuing on in our lesson about those nullifiers of the islamic faith nawaqid islam we in our past this is the fourth uh, lesson and in the past three lessons we talked about the introduction we talked about the importance of uh, or some important aspects of the issue of takfir, the issue of declaring someone a disbeliever from the religion of Islam, meaning that someone has apostated, and those conditions. We talked briefly about those conditions, and we emphasized that those rulings are for the scholars. They're reserved from the scholars, and we are not held uh, accountable for that. We're not held responsible, unless, of course, someone did something which is ma'lum min adin min bidurura. They've done something which necessitates that they're... Uh, uh, they have left the fold of Islam. Maybe they've outwardly said, I'm no longer a Muslim. Or whatever the case is. Uh, then those issues do not take, uh, you know, uh, going into details, or I mean going into a serious uh, research regarding that particular individual. However, these issues are, uh, in general, or these issues, because they're Sharia rulings, they're very serious and they're reserved for the uh, Islamic judges and reserved for the scholars that are well grounded in the issues of Tawheed and the issues of Shirk and the issues of uh, Creed and the issues of Fiqh in making judgments and rulings upon particular individuals. That these are Islamic. Uh, principles and they're reserved for the scholars. So, so those were some of the things that we mentioned. Then uh, now we'll begin the treaties and call the Shaykh Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahhab, ibn Abdul Wahhab rahimahullah ta'ala, rahmatullah alayh, call, I'lam in al-Nawaqid al-Islam, Asherat al-Nawaqid al-Awwal al-Shirk fi ibadatillahi ta'ala, call Allah ta'ala, in Allah la yagfiru and yushrik bihi wa yagfiru ma dun dalik al man yasha, wa call ta'ala, in nuhu man yushrik bilahi, fakar haram Allahu alayhi al na, fakar haram Allahu alayhi al jenna, wa ma'wahu al nar, wa ma'li dhalimina, min ansar. Women who adhabhu li ghayri la kamen yadhbahu li jinn. O Lil Qabr. So Shaykh Muhammad ibn al-Wahhab, rahimahullah ta'ala, he said, know that the nullifiers of Islam are ten. He said, the first being shirk, polytheism, in worship, by associating partners with Allah the Almighty. Allah the Almighty says, verily Allah does not forgive associating partners with Him. However, He forgives whom, whomsoever He pleases for committing sins other than that. And the Almighty says, whoever ascribes partners with the law, then he has forbidden him from paradise, and the hellfire will be his abode, and the oppressors will have none to help them. And from shirk is sacrificing an animal for other than a law, like those who sacrifice to jinn and graves. So the Sheikh Muhammad ibn al-Wahhab began his treaties. He said, know that the nullifiers of Islam are ten. Here Sheikh Muhammad ibn al-Wahhab mentions ten nullifiers of Islam in order to emphasize the importance of avoiding these serious and major sins which take a person outside of the fold of Islam. And because that these were widespread heresies that he witnessed during his time in the Arab uh, Peninsula. In addition, these are uh, sins that are mentioned and agreed upon by the fuqaha, by the scholars of jurisprudence uh, as nullifiers of the Islamic faith. So he mentioned uh, those ten and what's very important for us to realize as the scholars uh, explain that it is not restricted to ten nor was the maqsud or nor did Muhammad ibn al-Wahhab rahimahullah ta'ala uh, mention those ten in order to restrict it to ten but rather this made it easy for those people who were studying this treatise to memorize it for one memorize these ten and that these ten are the most serious and the most dangerous and uh, the most commonly uh, the the ten most common that people fall into which negate a person's Islam so he mentioned it uh, from that bab the reason this treatise was written 
was to make evident the danger of shirk or polytheism and to highlight it as the most serious violation of Islam and Tawheed. Before discussing shirk, it is very important for us to define uh, and uh, its opposite, which is Tawheed and Iman, or uh, Ikhlas in, in, in worship. In the worship of who? In the worship of Allah, the Almighty, the Creator of the heavens and earth. So firstly, implicit in the uh, definition of Islam, as is uh, illustrated or defined by the scholars, is the negation of shirk. It is inherent in Islam. When we say Islam, as some people say, it means peace. Or it means this or that. We have to know uh, what Islam really means. What is the real uh, meaning? What is a more encompassing meaning of Islam? That inherent is in Islam is refutation. It is a refutation of shirk. It is inherent in true Islam, in the true meaning of Islam, because Islam uh, uh, affirms Tawheed. That is, that is inherent in the meaning of Islam. As Islam is the full submission to Allah alone and strict obedience to His commands and separating oneself from shirk and polytheists. So the, uh, the ulama, the uh, Emmet Dawa, they define Islam as Al Islam is uh, Istislam lillah. That Islam, it is full submission to Allah and uh, Allah alone and strict obedience to His commands and separating oneself from uh, polytheism and polytheist. Allah the Almighty says, and they were only commanded to worship Allah alone in sincerity, for Him is the, the religion. They were only commanded in worship, uh, only commanded to worship Allah alone, meaning the Jews and the Christians were only commanded to worship Allah alone. These the nations who came before us. That was what they were ordered with. They were ordered to worship Allah Taala alone, not ascribe any partners to Him, not say that He is a son, not say that He is a daughter, not say that He is a wife, or anything like this, but rather that Allah is the only one worthy of worship and direct their worship to Him in Him alone. In sincerity and for Allah is the religion Islam is based upon the worship of Allah alone it's not based upon uh, political movements or based upon this or based upon such and such ideology but it is the full actualization in one's life of worshiping the creator of the heavens and earth so this illustrates the importance of directing all worship to Allah, the Almighty. And this is implied in the meaning of Islam, as we mentioned. The meaning of strict obedience to Allah is fulfilling His commands and distancing oneself from His prohibitions. As for the meaning of separating oneself from shirk and polytheists, it is believing that shirk is false and that polytheists of all types are disbelievers regardless of what or who they worship besides Allah. And this necessitates enmity towards those people who propagate disbelief, who are spreaders of that which uh, negates Tawheed. So for example, when it comes to disbelief, there's no way that we can say and we can be a part of interfaith movements. It's, it's not from, it, it negates Tawheed. Why? And when I mean interfaith movements, I mean those people who, who try to make Islam one with other religions. Absolutely not. There's no way you can have shirk and tawheed and say that they're one. And say, hey, we, we have the same prophets. Let's just forgive each other. In uh, I know, for example, that you worship Jesus and you worship uh, uh, something else. Or this one worships an angel and I worship Allah. But hey we're all going to the same place. No, absolutely not. Allah affirms for us all throughout the Quran that those people who worship besides Allah, that they will not be forgiven and they'll be in the hellfire forever. خالدين فيها in the, in the hellfire forever. And that this is the case for people who die upon shirk, who die upon the major shirk, that which takes you out of the fold of Islam. So there is no way that you can have a movement which is based upon 
worshiping Allah alone and worshiping the graves, or worshiping Allah alone and worshiping the angels, or worshiping Allah alone and worshiping Jesus alayhi salatu wasalam, or even worshiping the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Absolutely not. Islam calls you to worship Allah alone. Uh, and as for the meaning of separating oneself from shirk and polytheists is believing that shirk is false and that polytheists of all types are disbelievers so we can't say no my brothers from uh, Judaism and my brothers from Christianity are going to paradise as well absolutely not and I've heard this uh, myself from particular individuals who call to those interfaith uh, movements who go around propagating Disbelief, in fact. In fact, they propagate disbelief because they say that, hey, the only difference between you and I, and they're making a reference between them and uh, uh, Catholics and Jews and so forth, is saying that, hey, we're all going to paradise. Our only difference is the way we're getting there. No, that's absolutely false. That the belief, if a person believes that a person who commits polytheism or worships Jesus alayhi salatu wasalam, or says Jesus is the son of God or says that Muhammad is sallallahu alayhi wasallam should be worshipped this person has left the fold of Islam they're not a Muslim so if you do not make takfir of a person who does that then you are calling the Quran a lie you're saying that the Quran is not the divine speech of Allah and that Allah doesn't know best because Allah makes takfir of them Allah makes takfir declares Jews and Christians who do not follow the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, who worship besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be disbelievers and that is our position so that doesn't mean you can't have a nice, that you can't treat them nice. No, that's not what we're saying. That doesn't mean you can't have coffee with a Jew or Christian. No. Or that you can't work with them or something like this. No. But it means that you have to realize where the dividing line is. That you cannot say that they are going to paradise. But rather you should be concerned about their well-being and invite them to Islam and call them with good manners and good conduct and invite them, hey, I don't want to see you go to the hellfire. I want to see you go to paradise. Come to Islam. Here's what Islam, Islam calls you to worship and free yourself from the slavery and entrapment of worshiping the created things and creation. Allah relates the story of Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam when he said, We are free from you and disbelieve in that which you worship besides Allah. And between us is enmity and hatred until you believe in Allah alone. This is in Surah Al-Mumtahina uh, uh, verse uh, 4. This shows pure monotheism. And this is the Hunafa that Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam propagated, the, the pure monotheism, by distancing uh, oneself from disbelief and disbelievers and those factors which, and those factors and those uh, people and those idols and those things which are taken as gods besides Allah the Almighty. Allah the, Al, uh, the Almighty says, whoever disbelieves in those things worship besides Allah and worships uh, and believes in Allah has grasped a strong trust. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran that whoever disbelieves in those things worship besides Allah. This is what Allah says in the Quran. And believes in Allah has grasped a strong trust. So that shows us what? It shows us that first part of Tawheed is negating shirk and any and all forms of uh, polytheism. And وَمَن يَكْفِرُ بِتَغُوتِ وَيُؤْمِن بِاللَّهِ فَكَدْ Whoever Whoever disbelieves in the Tagut, those things, everything which is worshipped besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that is pleased with being worshipped besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that is a part of the Muslim creed that we negate shirk that when we accept Islam when we say ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna muhammad rasulullah 
Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah. I bear witness that there is no god worthy of worship except Allah. That statement involves negation and affirmation. A negation, ashhadu an la ilaha that I bear witness that there is no god. First we're negating that there are any false gods. And then we said illallah except uh, there is no God worthy of worship except Allah. So we're negating false, all false worship. We're negating all false gods. And we are affirming that Allah is the only one worthy of worship. He's the only true God. He, subhanahu wa ta'ala, is the Almighty, the creator of the heavens and earth. And all worship is directed to Him. And He has divine names and attributes, which we call and supplicate to Him by those names and attributes. And we worship Allah, tabarak wa ta'ala, by His divine names and attributes. This is what Islam calls us to. This is the kalimat al-tawheed. This is the miftah al-jannah. This is the, the kalimat al-uliya. This is the Arwata Wuthka. This is a strong trust. This is the key to paradise. This is Tawheed. This is true Islam. Al Islam. And uh, Istislam lillah li bi Tawheed. Wal in qiyad luhu bi ta'ati wal shirku. Wal in qiyad luhu bi ta'a wa khlus min shirku ahli. That Islam is submitting to Allah alone in our, and, and directing all of our, our worship to Allah alone. And uh, avoiding shirk and the people of shirk. This is what Islam is imper- inherent in the 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 kalima to tawheed and inherent in the meaning of Islam. And the law Subhanahu wa Taala says in the Quran, whoever disbelieves in those things, worship besides Allah. And believes in Allah has grasped a strong trust. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, as Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam said, we are free from you and disbelieve in that which you worship besides Allah. So Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam distanced himself from kufr and shirk. And that is what is upon the believer. The believer uh, believes in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and distances himself from any and all forms of shirk. And that's why it's so important for us to know what tawheed is and know what shirk is, what negates to, uh, tawheed. And to distance ourselves from any kind of false worship and any kind of false dawah or propagation of Islam. Any person who says, oh yes, I'm a Muslim and a Jew. I'm a Muslim and a, and a Catholic. Or I am a Muslim and I believe the Jews and Christians are going to paradise with us. No, that negates, his, that, that goes against the Islamic creed in totality. That goes against what Allah says. It isn't going, I'm not the one who made this principle. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, whoever disbelieves in those things, worship besides Allah. And believes in Allah, has grasped a strong trust. So there's no way a person can say that someone who disbelieves in Allah can go to paradise. No. Even if they believe in Rububiya, they believe in the lordship of Allah, but they say that he is a son or a daughter, or that he is three, uh, they believe in the Trinity, or they believe the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, or the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost, whatever their belief, which goes against Tawheed, it is false, and it is disbelief, and it goes against the Islamic creed. So it's imperative for us to realize that as Muslims, and to call and invite our brothers and sisters back who hold beliefs that are deviant like this belief to call them back and, and affirm for them hey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes takfir of them so you have to make takfir of them if you do not make uh, takfir of them and you do not believe that Jews and Christians are disbelievers in, 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 in uh, Islam then you have disbelieved in Allah and the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself has made takfir of them. And the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam himself sallallahu alaihi wasallam has made takfir of them. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. And anything I said that was correct was from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Anything I said that was incorrect was from myself and the shaitan. Wa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.